stream. So you guys, I am gonna go ahead and start that. Um, if you would like to follow along and just have a little bit of visuals, definitely hop on my Twitch. It's uh, twitch.tv babes in crypto land. Uh, it's also in my yacht on my profile page. So there's a quick link there as well. So Matt has some media prepared for us. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, you can you can watch along on there. So absolutely. All right, so let's get into it because we have a lot of really exciting stuff to cover and I'm super excited. So Matt, are you ready? <laughs> I'm very ready. Let's get started. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and start with snail games because that's where everything is basically stemming from. So can you just tell us a little bit about snail games and where you guys are coming from? Well, yeah. Um, snail games is actually a video game publisher and developer that has been uh, publishing and developing games for over 20 years now. Um, we've made over 35 games, um, and some of the notable titles we've released is going to be Ark Survival Evolved uh, and Last Oasis. I mean, we've been uh, pretty much in the gaming industry for, for quite a while now. Uh, the company started over in China before we decided to go over to uh, the U.S., and now we're headquartered over in California, and uh, it's, been, it's been a wonderful ride since. Yeah, definitely. And how long have you been with Snail? For me personally, I've been with Snail for about four months, and um, it's the best job I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I love that. Isn't it great when you kind of like, so this is like really full circle for you, right? I mean, I remember you telling me that this is one of the jobs that you really wanted like when you were younger, and now you have this job. So just can you can you tell everybody about that a little bit? Because I, I just think it's a, a neat story. Actually, yes, I have a photo I'd like to show everybody. It's uh, back, I think back in like 2014 or 2015, uh, I actually made my own Snail Games t-shirt. <laughs> um, got it like, uh, handmade it like one of those t-shirt presses. And I was taking it with me on vacation over in Tennessee because um, I saw like this uh, ride called Earthquake. And uh, one of the main admins back in uh, Age of Wushu was named Earthquake. So I thought it was kind of a funny moment uh, to kind of capture that. I'll put that up for you guys right now. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's really coming full circle for me because Snail Games is something that I've, uh, their, their games, specifically Age of Wushu, has been a title that I've been playing since uh, you know, 2013, 2014. And I probably put thousands of hours into that title alone, um, just simply because all the attention to detail and just the, the game mechanics alone was something that left me hooked for, for many, many years. And I, I think everybody here in the room that has been involved in uh, gaming to some extent, you kind of know all the lifelong friendships and, uh, you know, or enemies that you make along the way. <laughs> um, for, 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 for a game like that with uh, Age of Wushu being a game that I personally started out with and kind of delving into some of their other titles, I mean, it really has come full circle that um, I'm actually working here today with them. And I think that's also kind of a testament to what they do with uh, who they hire and, and what they're all about. And the company with Snail, I mean, what they're all about is video games and, and gamers in general. So having a gamer come from the community itself to be able to have the opportunity to work alongside the company um, after playing their games for so many years is honestly uh, an honor. And it's something that I wish that more video game publishers and developers would do with their audience. Um, but with Snail Games, uh, it's, it's, it's actually all, all full circle for me. So I'm, I'm very excited to be here. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite, quite crazy. I'm looking for that photo right now to put up so I can show you guys. But um, it's just been an exciting time ever since. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you find that photo, um, if you pin it or if you put it in a tweet, just let me know. And um, either you can pin it to the top. There's just um, there's like an arrow and then it'll allow you to share it to on chain gaming. You'll see that at the top. Otherwise, just let me know and then I can pin it as well. So no. I just uh, put it up right now. So, OK, awesome. I don't think I don't yeah, I don't think I can pin it up myself, but I have it on the Snow Games Web 3 account. Okay, all right, let me jump over there. So take a look at that. And let's see. 
Oh, there we go. Okay, yep, I see. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's great. All right, you guys will see that picture in just a moment here. That'll be on the Jumbotron. Um, don't forget to look also at the tweet where you can like and retweet and comment. Uh, follow those instructions, and then we're giving away a key package for ARC. So um, that's one of like the best-selling games we'll get into that in just a moment. Um, actually, let's 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 go ahead and segue into that. So. What are some of the games that Snail Games has released? Um, and then I don't know if you're able to like show us a preview of some of what you've released as well. We can get into that. Absolutely. So, um, well, we've made a lot of different games from a lot of different platforms and um, we've been pretty much everywhere, with whether it be mobile games or console games. Uh, or PC games, we've been uh, all over the place. Um, but let's talk about some of the games we made. Arc, uh, we've been involved with Arc Survival Evolved, uh, which is one of the major titles that we have released. Uh, it sold over 30 million copies and was one of the most successful titles that we do have in our portfolio. Um, and uh, Arc Two is around the corner, starring Vin Diesel, which I'll also uh, put up a trailer for as well for you guys to take a look at too. Um, we've also released games such as Last Oasis. Um, which is basically a survival MMORPG um, that we put on Steam. Uh, tai Chi Panda, uh, which is one of the which was one of the most popular mobile games uh, over in China during its release, and uh, other titles such as Age of Wishu and uh, Bounty Bay Online. We've had a portfolio of over thirty different titles across the years, and uh, you know it's just whether it be PC, console, or mobile, um, we've been building constantly in the space. So what's your favorite game under the snail umbrella? Well, uh, that would actually be Age of Wishu, <laughs> um, which is, it was called Nine Yen over in, over, over in China. Um, but Age of Wishu, uh, when it was released in North America, I was pretty much hooked. Um, I really had a strong interest in uh, Chinese culture, as well as martial arts as well. And uh, that game was very true to all of it. Uh, there was a lot of um, work that was being put into it. For example, there was a lot of motion motion captioning um, that was being mocap that was being used to be able to simulate authentic uh, Chinese martial arts. And um, even with the locations itself, uh, I'll give you an example. The Shaolin Temple over in Age of Wushu is essentially a one of one recreation of an actual Shaolin Temple over in China. Uh, the team had went the team had went over there and uh, was even blessed. Uh, uh, by, by the Chinese monks that were over there, um, but they took the Chinese temple itself um, for the Buddhist temple and they made a one of one recreation in the game. So I think for being an authentic experience, uh, as well as the just replayability of the game itself, um, Age of Wushu by far was my favorite title. But whether it be Age of Wushu or Ark Survival Evolved, it really depends on what kind of gamer you are and what kind of games you personally enjoy. If you like more of the uh, hardcore and the survival aspects in video games, then I think Ark Survival Evolved would be a good starting point uh, for some of Snail Games' products. But if you're basically into uh, more of like the PvP and the player killing, then Age of Wushu would definitely be one of the titles that I would recommend to anybody. And if you like a slow progression uh, that leads into a lot of character building and a lot of different, a lot of different skill sets to use, um, it was definitely a skill-based game. And I think that was part of, it, part of why I was so hooked to it growing up. Cool. That's awesome. I love that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I um, I played Ark a little bit. Um, I actually downloaded it on my mobile. And then just like everything, you know, um, sometimes you have to adult and you don't have as much time to play games as you want. Of course, I think that's something that we probably all struggle with. But, um, but yeah, I played it a little bit. It was actually really fun. And that game is like everywhere. Like if you go to the website, it's like on all the consoles, mobile, um, PC, it's everywhere. So that is pretty awesome that it's, you know, available for pretty much everybody. Like it's very like um, versatile as far as that goes. It also had a recent launch on the Nintendo Switch as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, going from PC and console um, just across the board, it's been a very accessible game to uh, anybody that wants to get into play. And I think that's part of what we do here is that we make games accessible. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's very important for sure. 
So let's see what else, what other questions do I have for you? Um, okay. Also, I, I have the mocap as well for Age of Wushu. I thought it'd be kind of cool to input that as well. If you guys want to see just some of the work that we put into um, just kind of going through all the skill sets in our video games, because attention to detail and uh, providing a quality product with some of the things that, you know, the company was, um, well, well, all four, you know, with any game that we touch. And uh, just wanted to include some of the mocap that we had for Age of Wushu uh, to make sure that we're being authentic to the genre of what we're building. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I pinned that to the Jumbotron as well. So you guys can go ahead and check that out. Let me see. Does that have audio with it as well? I would play without audio. Um, it's more of a visual experience. Okay, gotcha. I just didn't know if I should have that on my microphone. Or not, so. Oops. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, so you guys can go ahead and check that out as well. Age of Woolen. I love it. So as a as a veteran publisher, what um what makes you guys stand out from the crowd? Well, I think something that I need to highlight here is um, we've actually been keeping players' data um, for decades now. Uh, we have a game called Bounty Bay Online, um, and it was released about 15 years ago. And we've been keeping players' data safe and secure on our servers um, for, for decades. I mean, th that compared to a lot of their companies where, you know, servers shut down, they go through sunset periods, and they close down their games and services. We've been keeping our services online for, for our games for many years to come, um, which I think is something that uh, makes us stand apart. And also, um, you know, going back to the mocap and with the attention to detail, um, we care a lot about any game that we're getting involved in. We want to make sure that we're delivering a high quality product to our consumers. And um, I think as a company, we've just been standing by our titles for many years and many more to come. And I think that really makes us stand apart from a lot of the other publishers uh, in the space. I know it's a rapidly building space, but we we care we care for our players and we make sure they feel rewarded, um, you know, with, with, with their gameplay. They're able to kind of jump in, whether it was 15 years ago or today, to be able to have access to their accounts uh, and to be able to play the games that they love. And I think that's one of the big things that we take very uh, take a lot of pride in. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, with like, well, kind of like going back to the Guild Wars, I, um, you know, I haven't been able to log into my account, but that's totally like on me. Like, that's my fault, right? <laughs> if I um, if I did have my account information, I would be able to log in and, you know, collect all of my birthday presents and stuff like that. And so that is important that you guys keep that data, right? I mean, that's actually like pretty, pretty freaking amazing. Um, so you guys are well on well on track for that. And that's like one of the things that I think that is really cool about blockchain as well is that, I mean, unless like the blockchain goes down, like in, unless in Ethereum goes down, for instance, if you're building on Ethereum, then all of that information is going to be on the blockchain in an immutable form. So that's what's really cool about blockchain. Um, one of the things that I really like about that um, as far as gaming goes and just uh, in general, as far as information goes. So, absolutely. Let's see here. Okay, so I've got that pinned. Have you uh, put out any more tweets that you want me to pin to the top? Yes, uh, I actually put a uh, trailer for ARC 2, which is starring Vin Diesel. Uh, release the cinematic trailer to be available to everybody. And um, I think it's also pretty exciting to see just some of the products that we're building uh, in the background here at Snail. Ooh, Vin Diesel is going <laughs> to, that's crazy. So he's going to be in arc two or he's just going to be like in the trailer or how, how, how does that work out? Like what part of it is he, is he going to be in? I think it'll be exciting to find out. Um, but <laughs> right here we got him in the cinematic trailer and we're also making arc the, the animated series as well. Awesome. That's crazy. All right. Go Vin Diesel. <laughs> Love it. Um, I think it's pretty funny to look at all the comments about family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Um, as far as like, you know, 
I mean, I know that you just said that you have the trailer coming out for that. What's um, what's next for some of the more established titles that are under, under the snail umbrella? Well, we're always building with our titles. I mean, um, just recently uh, we've been we've released Arc Survival Evolved in the, on the Nintendo Switch, and um, with Arc Two, um, it's just been constantly uh, just been, just been constant work in the background on the title itself. So, um, with all of our products, we've been working very hard on uh, to deliver new content. But that's as much information as I can give at this point in time for those titles. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> That's all right, not a problem. I'm trying to um, find that on here so I can put it on my stream as well. There we go. Okay, so the cinematic trailer, amazing. All right, so I'm gonna let that kind of play in the background there. And um, we kind of did already, we kind of went over already like how you were introduced to snail games and your story behind joining. So I think that will, um, we already went over that, so we kind of got that checked off of my list here of questions for you. Um, what's a, what games are you currently playing? Just like a personal question, like what games are you currently playing? And then what's, um, are there any blockchain games that have caught your eye recently? Anything that you're excited about? I've actually been playing a game called uh, Kirby Air Ride. Uh, it's a 2004 Kirby Nintendo game. Uh, back to the GameCube, and it was something that I uh, personally ordered. Uh, it was just something I wanted to play and goof off with friends. It was one of my favorite titles. Um, and I see Goxie Media has their hand up as well. Um, I think they probably noticed Kirby Air Ride. Uh, as, and besides Yo, that, Kirby Air Ride, one of the best games of all time, hands down. <laughs> one of the best games. Thank you. Somebody else appreciates Kirby Air Ride. It, it got really bad reviews back in the day uh, when, when it first released, but I guess it was kind of misunderstood. Um, but Study Trial was one of my favorite things to do with friends, and uh, I kind of got a set up uh, for that itself. So, um, Aside from that, any blockchain games that caught my personal attention, um, I'd probably say Axie Infinity. And uh, I know that YGG itself, the Old Guild Games, is working um, with a project with Anime Girls and Rafts, and I thought that was kind of cool as well with what they're building over there at Castaways. So mm -hmm. um, aside from that, we're just currently looking at everything in the industry and how the industry is constantly evolving. I mean, it's a, it's a space that never stays still. And there's always new technology, there's always new strategies, and there's always new development that's going out there uh, in crypto and in Web3. So mm -hmm. uh, as a company uh, going from Web2 to incorporating Web3 uh, into some of the things that we're building here, well, I think it's uh, I, th I think it's pretty important to to kind of stay on top of all of that. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. This um, this space is, I mean, it moves so fast. There's so many there's so many games um, that are being built. I think I see a new blockchain game every single day. Like it's just absolutely insane. So. We've definitely got, you know, there there are a lot of actual fun games um, that you can play right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was in a, <clears throat> excuse me, I was in a space last night, and somebody was like, "What's a good What's a good game?" <laughs> and I was like, "Well, um, if you want to play something like, you know, fun and easy to jump into." play ev.io and so he like literally went to the website and he was up and playing in like a minute and he was like this is a blockchain game and i was like yeah i was like they're um you know they're making it like really easy to onboard new players like if if i if you were just like my regular friend and i was like hey come play this game with me like you wouldn't even know and so there are a lot of games that are out right now that are really fun and then there's so much coming down the pipeline. Um, I mean, I you know I do this space like once per week, but in reality, I could probably I could probably do it like three times a week. Um, just as you know, there's just so many so many blockchain games. Um, a lot of them you know contact me and they want to be on the show, but it's like well, you know I only do it once a week and I'm I'm actually like booked up right now, so um, let's try for 2023. And <laughs> you know I feel kind of bad sometimes, um, just because like we love to give 
you know, we love to give games a platform. Um, we like to show the community like what is being built and ask questions and all of that. But um, yeah, there, there's a lot. Um, I'm going to try to put out my own list of, of games um, by the end of the year just to kind of showcase showcase a lot of those. So I'll definitely share that with you. And then, you know, obviously, like if you guys um, coming into Web3, like I know that Matt, like you're um, in Web3 and everything like that. But, you know, sometimes it's just good to like be able to like bounce ideas back and forth from people that are in the industry. So if you guys ever need anything, just let me know. And then um, I've got, you know, a lot of like other founders that I could like maybe Put you guys in touch with because sometimes it's nice to just like talk to p other people that are that are building as well you know um like my friend Graslow down there um hey <laughs> i always like i always shout him out what's up <laughs> but he's uh he's building a game too and so it's just kind of nice you know to like feel like you're not alone and and even though you guys are both building something it, it's um you know we're all kind of like in this together right so it's nice to have that camaraderie, even though, even though you're actually competitors, but you know, <laughs> you know, it's all good. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, we've spent a good amount of time talking about snail's history and the web two side of everything. So let's get into the exciting part and why you're actually here today is to tell us about how snail is entering web three which is amazing absolutely so uh snail games uh our, our chairman actually went to the game space summit and gave an interview of uh, our vision over asset ownership and how we're currently in the process uh to consider building with web three um and with that being said uh what i wanted to kind of announce today is that we are making a game and uh this is also going to be hosting our own vision of the metaverse and we're also going to be incorporating our own proprietary gaming engine called flexi which is one of the most powerful gaming engines in the industry and we're also looking to be offering an eventual uh you know chain agnostic solution to gaming and um with that being said, we're really taking into account um, some of the things that are important to us, which is uh, asset ownership and uh, having players actually own their own assets and own their own data uh, and tokenization of those assets and also rewarding players for their time, um, you know, playing in in universe and game. And I think that's something that a lot of uh, Web2 companies uh, could delve into. Mm -hmm. uh, is to be able to be able to kind of build Web3 into their video games and build Web3 into their communities. There's a lot of things in Web3 uh, that would kind of, in my opinion, propel the industry forward. Mm -hmm. So we see the value and potential that Web3 provides and we're looking to build with it and we're starting with our own game. That's amazing. I um, That is cool. So can you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, can you tell us like, how long ago let me see when was that article when did you guys kind of announce that so that was like april 26 that was at game summit okay so ha have you guys already started like building it a long time ago or how long have you been um working on the development of the game i don't know if you can share that or not I don't think that it can start at this point of time, but I, I can tell you that we um, are working on a game and that we're tying in our own proprietary engine called Flexi, which has been used in a lot of our different titles uh, across the decades. So uh, that, that's what I can tell you at this point in time. Okay. And I'm personally pretty excited about it because it's it's huge to it's huge to even come out and say that because of just you know our place in the industry and us being. A, gaming uh gaming publisher and developer for over 20 years mm -hmm. uh coming into web3 and saying we see the value we see the value of being in this space yes absolutely um that is amazing like you guys are coming in so this is like you know just for everybody who's like in this space each week like i always you know talk to to games and you know they're they're already building but this is a publisher who's been in the game for a really long time and they see they see that potential. So that is really exciting. So 
a big warm welcome to Snail Games and Web3. Um, you guys should definitely all follow their account just so you can stay up to date with everything that they're doing. And um, I don't think that this is the last time that I'll be talking to Matt. So we'll try to um, we'll try to talk to you guys as you have some like major developments out and uh, and stay in touch. So so yeah, that is that is really exciting. Like that is um, thank you for like thank you for coming on my show and sharing that with everybody. Like that is huge, and I I really appreciate that. Um, I'm you know I'm glad that like we could be a part of that at G Media um, to be a part of that announcement. So that is that is really exciting. Glad to be able to share that because that's uh, that's big news for us, and we're happy to share it with you guys at uh, Goxy Media. And um, yeah, just more to come. Yes, absolutely. So, is there um, are there any sneak peeks of the metaverse that you guys are building right now, or is that pretty much all under wraps right now? Well, I can announce that we actually have a big announcement involving that Q one of next year. So you're going to be getting a lot more information um, during that point of time. And maybe we could talk about it on Gox Gene Media again okay. during that time. That's awesome. I love that. Okay, so Q1, you guys. <laughs> I'm excited to see what you guys are building. Um, what um, You said that Flexi. So you guys are building it with Flexi. So you have or you haven't built other games with that engine? Is this Metaverse the first? Well, a lot of our games actually has been built uh, have been built by Flexi, mm -hmm. and uh, Flexi is an extremely um, robust gaming engine that could build PC games, console games, VR games, and mobile games. I mean, it's pretty console agnostic, and it's a very powerful engine in itself. Um, but involving Flexi in particular, I mean, it's our proprietary gaming engine. It's been crafted for over a decade. That's been in use of over twenty of our games. Um, it allows anybody to create their own virtual worlds. And I think that's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And with what Flexi and what it provides is that it provides a built-to-scale server engine, a client engine, development toolkit, and voxel creator, um, supporting PC, mobile, and VR game creation. And something that's actually pretty cool that you really don't find uh, with the other um, you know, industry leaders for gaming engines is that we kind of allow people to connect uh, in a single scene. We allow, we allow over 2,000 people to connect in a single scene which is kind of an industry standard. So mm -hmm. a lot of times how, you know, like when you're rendering different areas, like in Guild Wars, you go to different districts, there's like a limit to how many players can be on the map at once or in a particular instance. But with our engine, what we provide, um, allowing up to 2,000 players to connect in um, is, is actually pretty powerful <laughs> in itself. So a lot of multiplayer networking capability and connectivity uh, that kind of makes Flexi pretty powerful. So with that, uh, it's going to be... Uh, used for our metaverse ambitions as well, so I think that's very exciting to kind of put that out there. Flexi is one of our one of our core products here at Snail. Awesome, I love it. Yeah, I'm excited to see like what you guys um, what that looks like and how that engine works. Let's see here. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I want to talk to you about is um, so games like Arc. Uh, those are across multiple platforms like console pc mobile um so is snail's goal to provide the same accessibility for your metaverse project like in the long run um like maybe like virtual reality um console pc like are you guys looking to go across all platforms like you do with arc <laughs> Well, we haven't really announced any compatible platforms that we're launching the Metaverse project on its time. Um, I think it's still too early for us to announce that yet. Um, despite us having that big announcement over in Q1, which is right around the corner. But what I will tell you is that with our proprietary gaming engine with Flexi, um, it's versatile. It can create things in PC, mobile, console, and VR. It has the capability to uh, to make those games happen in those different platforms. So. I think it's important to highlight that while Flexi is pretty powerful and how Flexi and the Metaverse is being tied together, um, it's just something that I can't answer a particular point of time, but I'm letting you know that the engine itself can handle all of it. Okay. Okay. All right. Gotcha. 
I'm picking up what you're putting down there. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to raise your hand. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, get to any you know questions if you guys just have anything. And then also we'll do the drawing for the keys for ARC in just a moment here. One of the um, one of the things that I just wanted to kind of go over a little bit is like kind of like the culture of Web3, right? Um, so it's it's really you know it's a lot different from web two uh coming into web three so with with web three and like being in crypto and everything like that you know um there's you know this like there's the fair share of like rug pulls and everything like that so you have to kind of like build build trust with the community right um it's you know companies like just try to come in and like that doesn't really work and so how um what is snail going to do to kind of like you know build the trust of the community and have a presence here what are you what are you guys planning on doing for that i think it's important to highlight that you know we've been a company that's been involved with over 30 different games across 20 years mm -hmm. uh, we've had decades years of experience in publishing and developing video games and our titles we've been keeping up to date for 15 years and counting, which I think is, is pretty important to highlight when we talk about transparency and trust. Mm -hmm. As a company that is a developer and a video game publisher, we've had that history for decades now. Um, and also, on top of that, we've also, we also recently went public on the New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. So from, from doing that and being involved with all those different titles across as many years, our commitment to gamers hasn't really ended. You know, it's we, we support the gamers that supported us for decades now, and we don't plan to stop anytime soon. Awesome. Yeah, that's a really good point. You guys have been around for a while. So it's, um, you know, it's just people like, uh, you know, the, the account that, that you created for the Snail Web 3, um, I'm sure that that'll have ties back to the main snail account. So people will be able to see the history and, um, and everything like that. So that definitely does help. Also. Yeah. The, um, the fact that snail is a publicly traded company now, that's, that's pretty amazing. That's, that's like super big news for that, for snail. Uh, it's, it's very big news. They actually recently went over there to, uh, ring the, uh, stock exchange bell, which was, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think that happened. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, so it, it's still it's still relatively new. But for us, being in the video game industry, mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't been new. It's been for the past couple of decades. We've been you know in this space and we've we've been building. Um, so I think it's very important to kind of highlight that a lot of companies, you know, they they kind of start here in Web three. Um, they don't really have too much of a history behind them. But mm -hmm. with us, you kind of know what you're getting because you've been you see the history itself, um, you know, in real time for decades. And I think that's pretty important to kind of take a look at. And and also, you know, as far as like Twitter presence and well as well, the Snow Games Web3 Twitter account uh, was just started today. Um, our Web3 ambitions were not started today, but the Web3 Twitter account was started today. But you can take a look at some of the other uh, social medias that we have uh, on Twitter. For example, Arc Survival Evolved, mm -hmm. uh, over 640,000 followers on Twitter uh, and counting and more. Uh, you know, an average player base between 30 and 50,000 players online uh, if you look at Steam analytics and such. Um, so we have a robust player base that you know, we do enjoy as a company. Um, and it's really cool to see what we're doing here with Web3, the metaverse, and what we're building here uh, together. So be, stay tuned for that Q1 announcement uh, because it's right around the corner. Absolutely. Um, do you know, um, as far as bringing players from traditional gaming into web three and crossing over do you guys have any any plans for transitioning people into web three uh, you mean through our like uh, other titles or, or bringing people from the uh, mainstream gaming industry into web three yeah i guess a little bit of both well, I mean, as, as a publisher and a developer for over 20 years, uh, we're still researching and looking at different ways that we can bring additional people um, into our products. And we're always constantly looking at ways to, to tackle that. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I think that we're going to be talking about more when the Q1 announcement hits pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, 
of how we're going to relate that. But as far as the games itself, um, we don't have any announcements for this point of time for any of our games that we have in our portfolio going into Web3. It's more of building, uh, announcing right now that we are intending to build a game mm -hmm. uh, that will be our vision of the metaverse that takes a lot of... Um, it takes a lot of care for players' assets and data and uh, kind of building it right and uh, that we're going to be having a Q1 announcement coming up pretty soon. So I think as a company that's been here for two decades, um, we're always looking for ways to become adaptable, especially in this um, particular environment when crypto is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. You know, everything changes in crypto from the tech to the community to um, everything that's being built. It changes daily. Uh, some people say that, you know, a day in crypto is a year in real life. I think that's a pretty realistic take on the industry itself. Um, so as the industry builds, we will build. And as the industry changes, we'll change and we'll adapt and uh, we'll evolve. Absolutely. I respect that for sure. Um, Alex, do you, um, do you have anything that um, you wanted to ask Matt? Um, I'm just really excited that uh, you know, a publisher that's coming in with a lot of expertise and just a lot of experience is coming in in this, uh, in, especially with these current market conditions. And given all the fear that's surrounding the market, it's a bold move. And it's, um, you know, leaders are really coming in because a lot of other projects are going to be waiting, waiting for people to f fail and fall. And so it's very admirable to see you guys jump into this space and be a leader and think, you know what, we're going to go ahead and, you know, take these risks, take these leaps of faith um, towards Web3 and beyond. So very uh, admirable. And it's, uh, you know, tip my hat off to you. And I, I loved it when you said you were talking about uh, the, the Kirby game. I'm like, yes, yes, City Trial. City. If only City <laughs> Trial had infinite time. You know, we all think that people <laughs> played that game. Um, and of course, Art Survival Classic. I mean, that's like a timeless game. And so many people, uh, you know, know that name, know that brand. So this just helps legitimize the space too. Like it's a win-win. When you guys come in, like you can provide value, provide that desirability, provide the art. But at the same time, this is also uplifting. It's really like rising the tide, rising the boats. And um, yeah, it's just an honor to have uh, you in this space, speaking with you guys. And just it's going to be exciting to see what you guys uh, cook up. I'm personally very excited, you know, because I think that it really comes full circle here. Like, for example, back in Age of Wushu, which is one of our oldest titles, we had a content creation mode with an in-game camera back in 2012. And, you know, 10 years later in 2022, we we'll plan to have the same, in a way. A game that caters to content creators and builders. A game that caters to developers. A game that... Um, really takes the creativity of people and, and builds, it, builds it right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that a lot of people um, don't really see in the industry is that some of the people that have been here for, for decades um, with, with, the, with, with a long track history of putting games to market and um, you know having success stories, whether it be in console, whether it be in mobile, whether it be in PC, coming into Web3 and coming into the space and, and looking at it, even even in the bear market, even we, even where we're at, and saying, you know what, I see the value in the technology, mm -hmm. and uh, we see the value in uh, what we can use to be able to kind of augment for the next generation of gaming. And I think that is the the bigger conversation to be had with our entry uh, into Web three because we've been doing games as a service for for the past two decades mm -hmm. and, and counting. Um, so it's just it's just it's really coming full circle here yeah 100 percent. i like that that you talked about believing in the technology and the longevity and it's key that really people appreciate a proven track record you guys got the receipts you guys can say hey you know what we're coming in we're designing it it's not just proof of concept it's not just Hey, look at my pitch deck. Look at this conceptual thing. Look at this thing that is, doesn't come to fruition. Mm -hmm. You guys have taken products and iterated it and actually seen it right to its completion. And not only that, mm -hmm. you know, m amazing, massive success with your product. So it's great to see you guys uh, jump into Web3 and it's, it's going to be, and it's going to encourage other developers too. It's just really leading by example. It's like, 
good for you. Right? Really congratulate you. I want to give you guys your flowers for being leaders in the space. It's uh, it's much appreciated. It's a breath of fresh air. I think something that I wanted to highlight right here, um, if uh, Eric, if you could bring it up on on the jumbotron. I love it. I love it. I call it the jumbotron. <laughs> um, but let, let's let's take a look at it together. I mean, I just posted the Snail Games USA portfolio. Yeah. And just go down from from all the games. Like these are games that took time to build and uh, and, to, and to publish and to put it out there in the world. And whether it be Ark Survival Evolved or Tai Chi Panda or Age of Wushu um, or, or mobile games or, or any other kind of game, like Bounty Bay Online, you know, 15 years and counting, we still keep this, the player save data uh, together, which is something that a lot of people really want to hear in the space because, you know, when you get to like the Web3 side of things, people worry about like, okay, is I know the blockchain side is immutable. It's always going to be there. But what about the company itself? What about the products itself? What about the, the dream what you're building? You know, we can we can safely say that. Hey, take a look. You know, we got <laughs> we got titles that are 15 years old that we still have player save data from since the, since the game was launched. And I think doing that for multiple games and for multiple titles is 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 pretty is pretty important to highlight of how serious we are um, with with what we're doing and what we're building. And I think that's something to take into account. So snail snail dot com slash portfolio. If you don't see it already on the on the pinned tweet post, um, I think it's pretty important to take a look at that because it just kind of shows you that we've been building for years now. And um, coming as a veteran publisher and video game developer into the space, it's it's very exciting to kind of share for like for the for the first time here in in the space in Gaxi Media space that we are building a game and we're building our vision of the metaverse uh building it with our proprietary engine called flexi and i think flexi is going to have a bigger role with how things go in the future um just simply because it's a powerful and robust gaming engine mm -hmm. that allows player connectivity inter inter interconnectivity uh in ways that would rival uh, a lot of the other competitors out there so mm -hmm. i think it's very exciting to be here and i think that's kind of what we're all about Yes, very exciting. I can't wait until you guys release more about the metaverse. Um, definitely piques my curiosity. So we'll have to just kind of, you know, hang tight and um, and wait for that news to come out. I wanted to just give everybody um, a last chance to get uh, their entry in for the key package that we'll be giving away. So uh, the second tweet on the Jumbotron up there, go ahead and uh, like, retweet, comment. Make sure that you're following um, the uh, Gokshin Media, Snail Web 3, and then Arc as well, because you have to be following in order to qualify, so you don't want to get disqualified for that. Um, we'll draw that in just a minute here. So it's your last chance, guys. Get it. <laughs> get in and then um, if anybody does have any questions go ahead and request to come up we'll get you up and um, we'll do that so let me go ahead and load up this twitter picker you guys let's load that tweet oops and okay, let's talk about those keys as well that's for arc survival evolve the base game mm -hmm. and uh, additional dlc so you're gonna get three different codes all, all at once so Make sure to participate. I think it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's nice of you guys to offer that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, let's see here. Twitter Pekka. All right, we've got the tweet preview. We've got some entries. Let's go ahead and begin that draw. Good luck, everybody. By the way, if I do draw somebody and they're not in the room, we will redraw. Um, you do have to be in the room. That's part of it. So looks like the winner is Kimberly Craig. Are you in the room with us right now? Let's see. Um, I don't see Kimberly. Do you see Kimberly, Alex? No, no, I don't. Okay. If you're just going by the username, no. Okay, all right. Let me. Kimberly's capping. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. Okay, sorry, Kimberly. All right, let's go ahead and redraw that. And our winner is Mirzda. Mirzda, you are in the room. Congratulations, that's awesome. Um, I'll go ahead and DM you those keys for the game and the DLC and everything. So congratulations on that. Um, and I'm also gonna um, post the winners for the Twitter picker so that you guys, that way you guys can see that it was a uh, fair drawing. So there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, congratulations. That's amazing, congratulations. Congratulations, Mirzda. Yeah. That's Matt's coming in with that combo meal. He's giving you the burger, the fries, and the drink. That's like <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's going to be three different codes all at once. So I think that's actually pretty exciting. Um, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Alex is like <laughs> Alex is like bro. The I I didn't comedian. hear I didn't hear a Kirby air ride in like two years. <laughs> If you're the first person that talked, I played that game religiously, man. I played that game on emulator. I played that game on the console. That's like, man, the nostalgia. I got, I got to check that game out one day again. Maybe, maybe one day. It's, it's all about collecting the stamps, right? <laughs> that's just like that game, man. Some games are just timeless, you know, and that's that's one of them. Just, just specifically that mode. Just specifically that mode, not the uh, the single player racing or whatnot. Just that mode alone is just insane. If no if no one tried it, definitely try it. But I mean, it, it is what it is. That's that's so epic. Thank you so much for that uh, that giveaway. That's that's crazy. That's uh, that's just great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for doing that for our community. Congratulations, Mirzda. Um, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions, so. With that, um, yeah, we'll definitely um, map, um, stay in touch. Um, let's play some Guild Wars. And uh, can't wait to hear more news when you guys have some more stuff to share. So um, like we said, this probably won't be the last conversation that we have with Matt. So we'll definitely let you guys know about that. Um, anything that you wanted to say before we wrap everything up, Matt? I just wanted to thank you uh, for your time and uh, thank Alex for his time as well. Thanks for having me on, guys, and uh, glad to be here and glad to be able to announce a couple of things for you guys and uh, looking forward to Q1 where we're going to be having another announcement uh, coming up for, for our product. So looking forward to it. And thank you, everybody, for listening in. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Um, big, warm Web3 welcome to Snail Games, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if it's your first time listening, we do this every single Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next week, I have a very special game that we are going to highlight. I'm not going to tell you exactly who it is, but it's uh, it has to do with like zombies, 3D zombies. I'll give you that. So um, nice little clue for you. So you have to tune in next week to see who that is, but that's going to be another great show. So Matt, thank you so much. I will... Talk to you soon. Mirsta, I'll DM you those keys. And I hope you all have a wonderful night, a great weekend. Um, if you don't have your crypto stored in a hard wallet, put it on your Christmas list and hopefully Santa will get that for you this year. Not your keys, not your crypto. You guys stay safe out there and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye, you guys. Thanks for watching.